I'm News for Jax, Assistant Chief Meteorologist David Heckard. Scientists and meteorologists around the world continue to watch a possible El Nino that may begin to develop as we head into the summer months. And we continue to monitor this through a variety of ways. And scientists this year have a new tool to look at a possible El Nino developing. And it's a very unique tool and one that really wasn't available previously. I want to show you this map. And this is from the Sentinel-6 satellite from NASA and uh, the JPL Caltech Laboratory. And this doesn't look like much here, but it's a very, very important thing. One, you'll notice this area of red that's developing right here across parts of the equator. Kind of get your bearings. Here's the United States. Right here is the coast of Peru. And that's where we normally talk about a developing El Nino is very warm waters off the coast of Peru. What we're watching, though, is not what we call sea surface temperatures or water temperatures. Normally, this is the chart that we show you. It looks very similar. I want you to notice down here at the very bottom this legend. Notice that MM is there. This satellite's very, very, very specific in the fact that it actually measures wave heights. And what it's showing is in this area of red right here across parts of the equator, it is showing wave heights a little bit larger than average. But we're not talking about a huge number here. We're talking about wave, wave heights around two to four feet. So it's truly incredible that a satellite is now capable of seeing wave heights around two to four feet. It's very, very remarkable. And you can see those wave heights are actually a little bit higher out here towards the coastline of Peru. Why is this all important? Well, what this is here, even though these waves extend thousands of miles out along the equator, this is what we call a Kelvin wave. And we know through research that multiple Kelvin waves often lead to El Nino conditions. And so what we're looking at here could be the beginnings of a real El Nino cycle developing even though the sea surface temperatures haven't really exploded over the last couple of months or so. And a reminder here, El Nino is good news and bad news for our area. The warmer Pacific Ocean water does lead to decrease in hurricane activity because we have a lot more what we call wind shear in the atmosphere. And that helps really take apart developing tropical cyclones and hurricanes, it weakens them, and in some cases completely allows them to dissipate. But in the winter months, a lot of times our weather here in southeast Georgia and northeast Florida is much more unsettled because the jet stream ends up running a little bit more through our area here. And that results in more severe weather that does develop in the winter months. And we do have a higher risk for storms, even tornadoes during the winter time in an El Nino cycle. So this new Sentinel-6 satellite could be very, very important in kind of seeing the beginnings of El Nino that could be almost eminent now to develop as we head into the summer season. It's going to have big impacts on weather around the globe, including here in southeast Florida, or southeast Georgia and northeast Florida. I'm Assistant Chief Meteorologist David Eckert for Channel 4, the local station.